Good morning, Church on the Hill. We're glad to see you back with us today. And if you're new to us, we're really glad to see you. Would you do, do us a favor? Take just a second and you can comment below or go to oth.life and hit connect and connect with us. Tell us who you are. We'd love to know about that. Also at oth.life, um, you can hit prayer requests. And if there's anything going on in your life that you would like prayer for, we take those seriously. And as a staff, we pray for those every week. So we would be honored to do that, to pray for you and to pray for your family. Today is the fourth in our series called Brave Enough. And today it's about being brave enough to serve. Because part of being a Christian and walking with God is serving others. So we're gonna hear a message about that today. So settle back, grab another cup of coffee and worship with us today. I hear the band getting ready and we are honored that you're with us today here on the Hill.
mighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Good morning, church family. My name is Chuck Wilkinson, and it is my privilege and honor to serve here at the Church on the Hill. Do you remember the first time you went to a library or the first time that you had access to lots of books? Now imagine if you or your family spoke another language and you did not know about the resources at a public library. This summer, I had the wonderful opportunity to see the amazing ways that the Holy Spirit works at the Buford Library. On Tuesdays in June through mid-July, we had the opportunity to pick up our children from the communities that we serve and transport them to the Buford Library. There, the librarian staff read books to them, issued library cards, and enrolled them in a summer reading program. I wish you could have seen their faces when they were told that they could take stacks of books home to read. Their smiles reflected excitement, hope, and love. Through our local library, these children will have resources for a lifetime of learning and opportunities to become the next generation of pastors, doctors, musicians, and you name it. So I want to say thank you for the amazing ways that you give and support the ministries of this church. It is through your generous giving that we are able to create and share God's love at the library and in our community. Remember, we are called to love God and love people. Let us pray. Lord, continue to transform our hearts to be more like you. Allow us to be more compassionate toward others and forgive us when we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Teach us, O oh God, to give and share without expecting anything in return. And open our hearts and minds to give what we have to you. Lord, may you use what we give to create spaces of opportunity for our children, this community, and your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. In the 14th century, there was a term called ekname, and it literally means an additional name or also. Other meanings that it derived from was to increase or extend, and eventually evolved to the term we now know today as nickname. They're names that extend or increase the meaning of a person or entity. I mean, nicknames can describe a person, sports team, movie star, an artist. 
How would you like to be called the bus as a football player? Or the flash? Or uh, Chipper Jones? You know, Chipper actually is a nickname. His actual name is Larry Jones. But he was called uh, Chipper because he was a chip off the old block like his father. Did you have a nickname growing up? What is one of your favorite ones? Well, I, I think about one of the ones in the Bible, the Sons of Thunder. I mean, that's a pretty cool name, right? It's always a good one. There are several names in the Bible that had great meaning. And there's a nickname in the Bible that epitomizes the meaning of also. And that was a name Barnabas. See, Barnabas was a nickname for a man named Joseph from Cyprus. And he was a Levite, meaning that he was a descendant from the tribe of Levi. And his nickname meant son of encouragement, because that's just who he was. His life exuded that. And there's a good reason for that. He was known for his generosity, faithfulness, and commitment to the gospel of Jesus. He was known for selling his land to give money to support the church and the poor. In Acts chapter 11, verse 22 through 26, it says this. It says, when the church of Jerusalem heard what had happened, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. And when he arrived and saw this evidence of God's blessing, he was filled with joy and he encouraged the believers to stay true to the Lord. Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith. And many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him back to Antioch. Both of them stayed there with the church for a full year, teaching large crowds of people. It was at Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. Man, Joseph was, a name, was named a son of encouragement simply because it described who he was. He was a person filled with the Holy Spirit, depended on God, and encouraged other believers. And I'm sure many people doubted the, the conversion of Saul to Paul, but Joseph, Barnabas, he responds to the Holy Spirit and he brings Paul back to Antioch and encourages him. Teaches and shares the gospel with Paul that he is, the part, he is part of the movement of Christians in the early church. He was known for his encouragement when others saw failure. In Acts chapter 15, verse 36 through 40, it says this, After some time, Paul said to Barnabas, Let's go back and visit each city where he previously preached the word of the Lord and to see how new believers are doing. And Barnabas agreed and wanted to take along John Mark. But Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. Their disagreement was so sharp that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyprus. Paul chose Silas as he left. The believers entrusted him to the Lord's gracious care. Paul didn't allow Mark to come on the mission trip with him because of earlier failures and immaturity. So Paul chose another person to take. And yet instead of going with Paul, Barnabas takes John Mark and goes to Cyprus. And from there, he encourages, trains, and serves his nephew, who ultimately becomes the author of the Gospel of Mark. Barnabas, on more than one occasion, through, uh, through at least Paul and John Mark, God used to redeem these men so that they could be encouraged, inspired, and given the confidence to preach the Gospel and lay down the groundwork for the church. And that takes a lot of humility, courage, and bravery. In Barnabas' life, we see that. See, God doesn't redeem us because we serve others. God redeems us to serve others.
know, one of my favorite trips uh, is when we were able to take trips, uh, it's been a while, uh, is going to Mexico to an all-inclusive resort. And what I love about that is that we would walk up to a restaurant and sit down and order food. It comes, we eat, we get up, and we go and do the next activity. And when we're ready to eat again, well, we sit down at a table, someone brings us food, and uh, we eat. And it's so nice to go on vacation like that and not have to worry about cleaning up or picking up after kids or prepping meals, washing dishes. You know, let me ask you this. What if we sat at a table and they just kept bringing food to you? And you just kept eating and you just kept getting fed and, and, and you're just feeding some more and you never get up or move around or exert any energy. What would you expect to happen to your body and to your heart? It's pretty detrimental. We would get sedentary. It, it is just about us and no one else, and the list goes on. Health experts tell us that when we are able to give out more than we take in, we stay in good shape. But what about our spiritual shape? What if we never give or serve, but just sit and feed? What do you suppose happens to us then? You know, we are created to love God and to love people. And in turn, we had a purpose that stems from that. It is to serve others. To love others means that we get to serve others. Not have to, but we get to. And I love this phrase. I love this phrase that we have here at Church on the Hill. It's service, not serve us. And the greatest example of that was Jesus. In John chapter 13, the disciples had that serve us mentality. But Jesus takes a basin of water and a towel bends down and he begins to serve others out of love. And Jesus is reminding us that we were created for a purpose, and that purpose is to serve. And Jesus says, if we want to receive life and to be fulfilled, we'll never get there, but just by receiving, we also have to give. But here's the thing. Serving's not easy. I mean, when we think about it, our lives are really busy right now, right? I'll take time to serve later when there is more time, or right now I have a business to run, or I have a family to raise, or I have a career to focus on, there are other things looming. I can serve another time. What prevents you from leaning into your purpose and following the example of Jesus to serve others? Sometimes we are waiting for the right conditions to serve. Or maybe we think we don't have enough to offer. Or I can't take time off to go to Africa to do missions. What can I do? I can't compare to that. Well, let me tell you this. God uses you wherever you are. It doesn't have to be halfway around the world. It can just be right here in your neighborhood. Sometimes it's the fear of the unknown or we don't think we are needed. But let me tell you, When we entrust our lives to God, Jesus will take us by the hand and take us into spaces that are are unpredictable, unknown. They take us out of our comfort zone, but God never disappoints when we trust him. There's so many excuses we can make and we can tell ourselves of why we can't serve now, but hopefully later we will. But you know something? I have found that the best servants are not those who are the most talented or gifted or trained or who have all the time in the world. These are great qualities, but the most important ones, the best quality of a servant is one who is willing to go beyond themselves and lean into God's strength and trust and God's ability to work through them to be extension of God's grace and mercy to the people of this world. That we can't train, but what we can do is walk alongside one another and lean heavily on God with a humble heart. In John chapter 3, verse 30, it says, He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. What if the greatest characteristics of serving is not your abilities at all, but it's centered around your willingness to allow God to become greater in your life, and you become less? Because God doesn't redeem us because we serve others. God redeems us to serve others. I 
was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost, I was blind I was running out of time Sin separated The breach was far too wide But from the far side of the chasm You had me in your side So you made a way Across the great divide Left behind heaven's throne To build it here inside And there at the cross You paid the debt I owed Broke my chains Freed my soul For the first time I had hope Thank you, Jesus For the blood of life Thank you, Jesus It has washed me white Thank you, Jesus You have saved me Took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin You were buried for three days And then you walked right out again And now death has no sting And life has no end For I have been transformed by the blood Name.
You know, there's a story I came across of some pastors talking about how many ministers they had at their church. And this was a sign for them to show others how big their churches or how successful their churches were. And as these pastors were sharing with one another, they were trying to impress each other by showing off how large their staffs were. One was mentioning, well, we have two full-time pastors. Well, another pipes up and says, well, we have four full-time pastors that oversee these ministries. And then the group of pastors looked over to the quiet one who did not engage in the conversation at all. And they asked him, well, what about you? How many ministers do you have at your church? And he, without hesitation, answers, we have a little over 700 ministers at our church, and they are sent out every day. Every person is called to serve. It's our purpose and it is an example set by Jesus for us to follow. In John chapter 13, verse 14 through 17, Jesus says, And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their masters, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Let me ask you this. What are the obstacles that are hindering you from serving today? In, in this series of being brave enough, there is courage and humility and a willing heart to step up, to step out, to be brave enough to serve. Where is God leading you to be brave enough to serve today? Are you waiting for the right conditions? Because it will never come. If you don't think you have enough to offer, you're wrong. God gives you what you need. But more importantly, you have an opportunity to use what you have to be a blessing to others. We will never know what God can do through us unless we give God the opportunity to increase and for us to decrease so that we can experience the joy of serving and loving others, but also leaning into our purpose. We may have the opportunity to walk with someone who needs encouragement or serve someone who needs love and grace or feed someone who is hungry for physical or spiritual food. So where is God calling you to be? Is it our weekend food program? Are you brave enough to serve our kids and students? Because they need people who will walk with them, who will listen to them, and more importantly, who just love on them. Or is it being brave enough to serve your neighbor that you live near. You know, you don't have to do all of this at once. You just start with one. Mother Teresa writes this, if you can't feed 100 people, then just feed one. Are you brave enough to serve? God doesn't redeem us because we serve others. God redeems us to serve others. That was an amazing thought, wasn't it? God doesn't redeem us because we serve others. God redeems us to serve others. That's an amazing thing. Are you brave enough to serve? That's the question for today. So we're so glad you were here worshiping with us today online. But the next time you're around, come and visit with us in person. 9.30 in the chapel, 11 o'clock in the worship center. We would love to meet you in person. See you next time.